Hi, Travis Hessman here reporting from 2014 IMTS. Standing here with Ed Mullen, uh, the National Sales Manager uh, for Universal Robots. Um, now, we've been seeing these machines pop up, um, this and a couple other, other brands, for these collaborative robots these last couple of years. Like 2012, they seemed very new, um, but now they seem much more common. Um, can you tell, just in general, uh, what these collaborative robots are? Uh, and I guess what makes them different from sure. normal robots? So collaborative robots, meaning robots that can work next to people. So uh, you notice here that our robot is running without large safety cages around it. That's probably our biggest feature. We've got some force sensing built into all the joints that allows the robot to run potentially safely without guards around it. So that's our biggest feature. The other big feature of our product is the ability to have customers at all levels be able to interface to it set it up, program it, and get it working very, very quickly. Good. I guess that starts like the two major questions for this one, safety and functionality. Uh, can you talk about the safety issue with these? Because um, I know like a lot of the people who are used to standing, uh, working with robots, get really freaked out when they see people standing this close without a cage. Can you explain what's going on? Sure. So um, the, uh, the global standards, the ISO standards, and the North American RIA standards both give us um, sections within those standards to be able to run a force limiting robot, which means that we limit the amount of collision force that the robot exerts when it comes in contact with people, okay? Naturally, with every application, the robot doesn't make the application safe, it's the application that makes the application safe. So for every application, you do have to do a proper risk assessment to make sure that the application is truly a safe application. Right, so if it's not swinging a knife around, so we would have cages. Yeah, exactly. Tennis balls are easy to move around safely, but you put the, take a tennis ball off, put a knife on it, it becomes very dangerous. Right. So um, the force limiting, though, does that limit the, the overall capacity of the robot as no. far as lifting? And that does not affect our load carrying capability. That's just our collision force settings in there. And with this robot, this is our newest third generation robot. We actually are taking this one step further where we're actually giving the user the ability to change and set those collision force limits to lower limits if they need to. So now it's a variable, not a function of the speed and load the way it was in our old generation robot. We can also limit speed, joint angles, and actually create virtual barriers or virtual fences in space with our new generation robot here. Right. Let's talk about programming though, because um, I know um, the traditional robots, you had to have an engineer on hand to do all the coding and you got the consistency. These robots are very different, I understand. Yes. Yeah, so we really pride ourselves on, on providing a user interface that allows anybody at any level to take the robot and set it up very quickly. All right, there's a couple different ways you can program the robot. You can jog it, you can enter coordinates in, or you can release a button on the back of the teach pendant that frees up all the motors and allows you to actually grab the, ro the, mo the uh, robot and put it into position yourself, and it learns that waypoint. So it's, uh, it's, it's really becoming more of an interactive tool than a programming environment. So I could grab a hold of this thing right now and train it to do anything I want? Yes. Then I guess that opens it up. Um, because the people, uh, I believe, who are interested in this, who I talk to, are the small and uh, medium-sized businesses who can't afford the normal robots. And this seems to be opening up a big opportunity for automation for them. Do you see that happening? Absolutely. So right, you know, in, in the past, with conventional automation, small and medium-sized companies couldn't justify investing in a conventional robot investing in, in safety cages and hiring an outside company to come in and program it because they just didn't have the throughput to pay for it. So now with this product here, a company can, can, can buy it very quickly, they can install it themselves, and they can take ownership of it themselves, program it, and get it working very quickly. And there's a tremendous value in that feature and taking ownership of it themselves. So what are they actually doing? So some of your customers, you don't have to mention the names, obviously, uh, but wh what are they doing in these factories? You know, it's funny because uh, when the company got started back in, in Europe 2009 selling this product, it was mainly in the, the metal cutting and machine tool industry. But what we're starting to see is the amount of uh, different applications that are popping up for this type of product is, is, is just growing by the day on it. Because now we're giving any customer or any potential user the ability to, to play with automation, it's really opening up so many different doors in so many different industries. It's uh, pretty fascinating. Like you just don't pick it out of the box, you mess around with it and figure out what you can use it for. Well, yeah, you can you, you unbox it, you mount it. You uh, a lot of a lot of guys are becoming very creative with the type of end effectors they're putting on the end of it. You uh, you take it, you teach it, you show it what to do, and it mo and it moves. And by just understanding that and empowering people with that 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 ability 
really just keeps the, the juices flowing and uh, the creativity flowing. So what it what do you see as like the, the big potential for these tools in manufacturing in the broader sense? Well, I think uh, the, um, the amount of uh, applications that you could potentially automate are going to grow exponentially in the next couple of years. And I think that's going to uh, going to make companies more efficient. It's going to make uh, uh, employees much more valuable because they're going to be tasked with, with uh, tending a robot, not doing uh, remedial tasks. And I think that's just going to overall uh, improve manufacturing here in the U.S. All right, so let's close that out. That's Travis Hessman, again, reporting from 2014 IMTS. I'm here with Universal Robots. See you later.